Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer, and today we're going to discuss what kind of prepper you may or may not be. I'm going to be out and about, walking around a little bit. It helps me think when I'm when I'm moving, sitting still for some reason. I, my brain doesn't work very well. I've discovered my son's like that too. Like when we're uh, when we're studying for something, the kid he does so much better when he's up being all twitchy moving around being weird you know dancing around the the living room but anyway um what kind of prepper are you uh i don't like labels i don't like titles i don't like to be called a prepper i don't like to be called a survivalist i don't feel like i fit into any of those categories for some reason i don't feel like i belong for some reason um because i'm not just one of those things i'm i'm all of those things um and when we talk about preparedness, we got to discuss, we got, we got to open up the conversation of, of what kind of preparedness. So are we, are you the guy that's prepared for wilderness survival, which is often most of the stuff that I teach and the most of the stuff that I, I have um, made videos on is you're in a wilderness situation, stuff goes wrong, you're in trouble, you're lost, you're injured, you're whatever your plane crashes in the andes and you've got what you've got and you've got to try to make your way back to civilization or wait it out until civilization finds you um that's one end of the spectrum i guess the short-term survival right um and then there's the whole other end of the spectrum where it's you are um, preparing for the doomsday, right? The, the very end of the spectrum. You're preparing for, you, you filled up a bunker full of 15 years worth of dried goods. You've got 10 million rounds of ammunition and you think that you're just gonna wait it out. Um, I, I like to think that I fall somewhere right in the middle of all those things and I, and I wanna be as well-rounded as possible when it comes to survival. I am not trying to say that I've got everything all figured out. I, I am in no way telling you that I am the guy that's prepared for anything, you know, and he's gonna, he's gonna flourish no matter what the situation is. That is definitely not the case. I am learning every day. Um, just like you guys watching the video, I, I am no expert of anything. Um, and I will never ever claim to be. Or maybe you're the homesteader, right? Maybe you've got the chickens, you've got the goats, uh, you've got cows, you've got a pasture, you've got fields of corn, um, big garden beds, um, you know, all of that taken care of and you plan to kind of live off of the land. And I think that that is definitely a good idea. You should be able to produce your own food. And along with that comes so much knowledge, um, practice, you need to practice those skills. It's not just, you know, I, I've heard people say before, oh, you know, I've got, I've got some seeds stored away, you know, in case the zombies come. You know, that's great. You should definitely have some seeds. But the other end of that is knowing what to do with those seeds, when to plant, what to do with them after you plant them. Um, having a place to plant them that's going to be productive. What's the soil like? There's just so much of that stuff that we kind of just think, oh, you know, I'm going to throw some seeds on top of the dirt somewhere and... Uh, food will happen. It is not like that at all. And if you've ever tried it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You got to stand over, you have to stand over your garden with like a pitchfork waiting for something to, to eat it, to destroy your crop. <laughs> so, and you've got to, you got to defend it with your life. Um, and it can be really, really challenging. And I, again, I'm no expert on gardening or farming or livestock of, of any kind. This is my rooster dude. What's up, dude? He's very noisy, but he's a pretty nice rooster. Uh, my whole life since I was a kid, basically, I, uh, I've been practicing primitive skills and wilderness survival skills um, and things of that nature because I just it just appeals to me. I enjoy it. I, I like having the skills, the knowledge, the practical application of those skills. I like to possess those things. So if I, if I get dumped off in the middle of absolute nowhere, with very few resources, very few tools, gear, equipment, whatever it is, I have confidence that at a minimum, I'm not gonna die, at least for the short term, right? I can make it a significant amount of time without civilization. Or maybe you're the kind of prepper that um, just believes 
really strongly, firmly that the Lord will provide. Um, the Lord will provide for those that provide for themselves. <laughs> um, I, I think he's there to, to guide us. Uh, he's not there to do it for us. A strong faith in God, I think, is really, really important because it gives us courage. It gives us, it gives us the strength when otherwise we would be lacking. And I think that that's really important. Um, because without that, times can get pretty dark and pretty dim, pretty, uh, pretty sad. And I think a lot of us, I think a lot of you watching this are, are in a place of, of maybe, uh, I don't want to say hopelessness, chickens are fighting each other. I don't want to say hopelessness, but maybe that's where you're at. Maybe you're in a, a place that you feel like it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you work for, what you try to do, it's going to fail or, or what's the point? You know, why are we here? All of those philosophical endless questions that you'll never, ever have the answers to. Um, maybe you're in that place. Um, I think the key for you, for me as well, is to just keep moving forward. You know, just keep doing the next thing. Wake up in the morning, do the next thing. Um, and do it to the absolute best of your ability. Never give up. Never, never give in. Just keep pushing. You're going to fail. You're going you're gonna to fall down. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get lost in the woods sometimes. But that doesn't mean that's where you stop. That doesn't mean that that's where you give up. It doesn't, you never, ever, ever give in. And I think that that survival prepper mentality is the key. Um, and having a faith in a higher power that's that that's a knowing that God is there to help me when needed to pick me up when I've fallen down um, having that faith I think is is so important and many of you that are in that lost confused hopeless kind of state I think are maybe possibly lacking that and you need to reach out for that help And more recently, in the past, you know, past 10 years, I've been really researching and looking into, you know, the homesteading side of things. And, and the goal of that is kind of the opposite. The goal, the goal of that end of the spectrum of preparedness, prepping, whatever you want to call it, is that you don't need civilization. You can stay, stay away from civilization forever, basically. I, I don't need it. I don't want it. Um, I can do what I do. I do what I do, and I don't need, you know, someone dictating my, my life, telling me how to live it, and what I do with my time, how I spend my money, um, and that really, really appeals to me, too, because like, like a lot of you, pretty much everybody watching this video, you don't want to be told what to do. You don't want the government dictating how you live your life, and by being self-reliant, by being um, independent of the system, you are free to do whatever you want, whenever you want to do it, for the most part. I know there's limitations on that too. You still got to pay your taxes. <laughs> Otherwise they come for you. It's theft. Having to pay taxes on something you already own is theft, in my opinion. It's ridiculous. I, I, I don't understand it. How do you fight it though is the question. How do you fight that system? We'll talk about that later maybe. I don't know exactly what it is. It's hard to describe what draws me to the wild places that people fail to roam most of the time. But I really, really enjoy that. And if you're into that kind of thing, if you're into being in places that are really remote, um, where you're not going to run into anybody else and help us a long ways away, you need to be prepared. You need to have a lot of survival. You need to have those survival skills um, to get yourself out of that jam and just not die if something goes wrong. If the weather changes for the worse, um, if you, uh, get injured, get turned around, lost, excuse me, um, it doesn't matter. You need to be prepared for that situation. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy that side of survival and, uh, preparedness. Many of you watching may, you know, live your life, um, on social media or you, um, watch the news a lot and you'll think that the world is a pretty grim place if that's if that's the case um if you if you watch the news you'll think that everyone hates everyone 
Um, the government's coming for you, which it might be. <laughs> um, and, and you'll think that, um, you know, there's, there's no hope in sight. Uh, but if you stop watching the news and you get off social media and you go outside, smell the roses, um, sit under a lean to shabby shelter. If you visit some friends, help your neighbor out with whatever it is that he's doing, she's doing, you'll, you'll discover that the world is so much different than what's on the news. You'll discover that people are generally pretty good to one another. You know, I've, I've, I've listened and talked with people in the, in recent in the recent past that, and they, they've, they've told me, you know, the, the cities are doomed. Um, uh, you know, everyone's fighting each other. They're shooting each other in the streets. And listen, I'm not denying that, that bad stuff happens and I'm not denying that people do bad stuff, but just be, but just as people are capable of doing horrible, horrible things to one another, they're, they're equally capable of doing really, really good things. Um, and I think if you, you stop watching the news, the world becomes a much, much brighter place. And it will change your, your outlook on life and it will make you be a much more positive individual. Nobody wants to hang around with the guy that's always, you know, the world is coming to an end and we're doomed and you might as well give up. And nobody wants to be around that. People want to be around the guy that's smiling and happy and and positive and living life to the fullest and sharing his adventures and sharing, sharing, um, his family and his, in his home and, 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 and just making the world a better, brighter place. No one wants to be around the, the naysayers of the world. And I think that, uh, you know, when it comes to deciding what kind of prepper you're going to be, be the one that is helpful. Be the one that's kind. Be the one that puts others before yourself. Always be ready and willing to help when needed. When you're called upon, be there. Show up. Do it. And I think that you'll discover that will make you a, a richer, happier person. I don't think so. I know so. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up. Um, leave us a comment. Tell me what kind of prepper you think you are. What are, what are you doing with your life? Get serious. <laughs> um, and, uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already and I'll catch you on the next one.